This is a video for how to go about calculating roof design loads for your civil engineering class. I would like for you to note that in the description area for this video, there is a link to this spreadsheet that I will be using during the video, and you can make a copy of it and follow along with me. So when you click on the link, you're going to see make a copy. So we're just going to click on make a copy and go ahead and let that move. And where it says copy of up here, you know, I'm going to I'm going to highlight where it says copy of for the uh, video and the, for the spreadsheet. And I'm just going to say video and I'm going to hit enter. And you're going to see kind of this front page that I have created here. This front page has a design snow load, a total dead load, and then a roof design load. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how to find out how much weight is actually, you know, acting on a roof in pounds per square feet. So we will come back and we will reference this roof span and we'll also be looking at this um, rib deck chart that we're going to look at to choose what type of a rib deck we should choose um, after we've determined how much weight is actually acting on the roof. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the design snow load tab at the bottom. And on the left hand side of the screen, you can see criteria. And it says the low slope roof be conducted of a steel roof deck, five inches of ridge insulation, and a built up roof. We're going to assume a double span. We're going to say it has a support of mineral fiberboard. And you're going to say the roof's going to support t about 10 pounds per square foot of me mechanical, electrical, and plumbing material. And we're also going to say it's located in an urban so environment surrounded by other buildings. Now, the school that I um, teach at is Lafayette High School. So you see up here where it says snow load for Lafayette High School. So if you're doing this in a high school setting and you're trying to find the snow load for your specific school, you can come up here and change it. If you're trying to find it for, you know, a library in Indiana or where, wherever else you might be looking, you can change that up here. Now, the equation to find uh, the total snow load you know, acting on something is... Uh, kind of a involved equation and there's all different types of things we have to find you know the roof slope factor we're going to keep that at one the exposure factor is going to stay at one the thermal factor in this case is going to stay at one and then we have to find something known as a importance factor and an importance factor means what kind of structure are you building and who is it designed for is it like a temporary storage shed is it a school is it a police station is it a high-rise apartment building that's going to hold 3,000 people in it there's a lot of questions to answer with that so you'll notice that for each one of these things that you see blank the importance factor the snow load i have separate tabs down here for those so we're actually going to be doing a little bit of spreadsheet work as we go through and do these uh, design loads for your roof. So we're going to go to importance factor. And there's all these different factors right here from 0.8 to 1.0, 1.1, or 1.2. And we need to go to the occupancy category for the IBC table 1604.5. So we go back to snow loads, our snow load tab, there's actually a link to that spreadsheet. And we're going to be using the 2018 International Building Code. And if we go back to our spreadsheet here, we can go back to the importance factor, and it says table 1604.5. So I'm going to scroll down until I see 1604.5, and we're going to see this little chart. We're going to go ahead and keep going. 1604.5, and here's your risk category. Similar to what you see here, we also see within the building code. And you know, you can say, are we going to make a, a school in this case or, you know, wherever else? So we want to look where there's a substantial hazard to human life in the event of failure. So it says structures similar containing group E with an occupant load greater than 250. Buildings other structures containing educational occupancies for students above the 12th grade. That would be, you know, like a college setting. Um, public assemblies over 300. That's kind of we're in the three area here. We go down here, you see fire, rescue, ambulance places, aviation buildings, water storage, kind of more of your civil, civic type buildings. But in this case right here, we're in the three area where it says occupancies with 50 or more, you know, having emergency surgery or treatment facilities. I'm going to say that I'm building mine for a high school. And I'm going to say that it's going to be a structure containing, you know, people in a, an occupant load greater than 250. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that, you know, we're in a we're in a school situation here. And I could say, you know, an occupancy load greater than 5,000, you know, the school that I teach in has about 2,000 kids in it and I know there were right around 2,500, but we're also in a school setting. So I'm going to I'm going to stay with 3 right here for my risk category. So if I go back to my spreadsheet, I see 3 right here. I'm going to for my importance factor, I'm going to put a 1.1 up here. And it's going to automatically go to 1.10. We're going to go back to our snow load for our importance factor, and we're going to hit equals. 
and we're going to go down and click on the importance factor tab and I'm going to click on importance factor and I'm going to hit enter and the 1.1 is going to automatically jump into there. Ground snow load is where we're going to go next. So I'm going to go down to the tab that says ground snow load and here is a link to building codes for snow loads. And it's going to jump right back into the 2018 International Building Code. And over here on the left-hand side, we see snow loads. We're going to click on snow loads, and we're going to scroll down. And right here, you can see you know, a lot of the West Coast, you know, a little bit of the mountain time zone as well. And, and as I scroll down through here, for me, I'm in the Midwest. So I'm, I'm looking at a high school in St. Louis, Missouri. And St. Louis is right here, and I can see it's 20 pounds per square foot. If by chance you were building one for a high school in Chicago, you can see how you know the city of Chicago is right around in this area here, and you'd go with 25. For the sake of the video, I'm going to go with 20. So I'm going to go back to my snow load here, and I'm going to put down 20. And I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to go back to my design snow load. For my snow load, I'm going to hit Enter, or excuse me, Equals. I'm going to go back to my snow load. I'm going to click on that 20. I'm going to hit enter. What's nice about this is that if I come back to this and I say, you know what, I actually am designing for one in Chicago, I can just change this to a 25, go back to my snow load, and it's going to automatically jump. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to put in 20, hit enter. We'll go back to design snow load. Our design snow load right here is designed to uh, multiply all of these numbers together. So we're going to hit equals. And I'm going to say each one of these multiplied by each other. I'm going to hit enter. And our design snow load is 15.4. I only have 15.4 in this case. Not too terribly much. I can go ahead and round up and say 16 in this case. Again, you know, if, if we were doing this, what's so nice about Google Sheets is, you know, if I go back and I say, you know, 25 is actually my design load, I would have 19.3 or something like that. Just go right back change it for whatever you're designing to, and it's going to automatically jump. So it says we're going to scroll to table 1607.1 in the link below, and we're going to see, does this meet a low sloped roof? Does it go over a low sloped roof amount? So we're going to go to 1607.1, and here we are, a low sloped roof. So we're going to scroll down until we see roofs. Let's take a look in here. Got to scroll up and down a little bit until we see roofs. Roofs low sloped roof is it going to cover go over ordinary flat pitched or curved roofs we have a low slope roof which is pretty close to flat it's at 20 it does not go over so it is acceptable so does the snow load meet the design requirements for a low slope roof the answer is yes it does nice i'll go ahead and make that bold we had the importance factor down here we had the ground snow load we have a total dead load in this case now I've kind of itemized a, you know, some things from a section view of what we can expect to have within our roof. So at the very beginning in that first tab we were at, you know, for our, you know, our load, it said a built up roof, a low slope roof constructed of a steel roof deck, five inches of rigid insulation and a built up roof. So this gives us a lot of the detail that we need in order to do this. So a built up roof. Is what we'll be looking at. So I'm going to go to built up roof and I have, you know, a weights of materials table here that I'm using. You might need to find something from somewhere else, but I'm going to scroll down until we see roofing material and I see built up roofing material. I'm going to go back to here for built up roof and I'm going to say six and a half and I'm going to hit enter. It also said that we were using five inches of rigid insulation. So for five inches of rigid insulation, we're going to go back to my weights of materials here. I'm going to find insulation. And it said, you know, per inch of one inch thickness. So it said five inches. So we're going to need to do a function. This is, you know, 0.75 pounds per square inch for every inch of thickness. So we're going to go back to rigid insulation. I'm going to hit equals. It said five inches, five times 0.75. Hit enter. It's 3.75. Next we need to find is a steel roof deck. We're going to go back to materials here. We're going to go back to roof, steel roof deck. Let's come back up. Steel roof deck. Steel roof deck. Let's go down through here. It's a three inch steel roof deck. Roofing material. Yeah, here we go. Steel roof deck. Steel deck. Three pounds per square foot. We're going to go ahead and put three into steel roof deck right here. 
We have a five eighths of an inch suspended ceiling. Where am I getting all this from? All throughout here. Five inch, so we have a five eighths of an inch suspended ceiling. We're gonna go back to our materials here. We're gonna try to find the ceiling. Concrete, here we go, brick and block. Still scrolling up and down, if you're like me. Um, go up and down inside of these things. Suspended ceiling, 5 eighths of an inch is 1.4 pounds per square inch. I'm going to go back to here, 1.4. And again, back at our design snow load at the beginning for what you're designing for, it said assume 10 pounds per square foot for all the equipment. We're going to go back to here, and we're going to say 10. And we're going to hit Enter, and we get 24 Point six five. Now we want to round up because we always want to say that we're just going to go and design for a, we're going to say the loads a little bit more than what we expected every time. So for this, we're going to hit equals and we're going to type in round and you can see round up, round down. We're going to hit round up. We're going to tap on this number up here. We're going to hit comma. We're going to say point 0.1. And we're going to hit enter and it's going to round to 25. It's going to round up a tenth of a point to 25. So we now have ourselves 25 pounds per square inch for, excuse me, for the actual design model. So here we are with the design snow load. We've already calculated that. We just did the total dead load. So for design snow load on our very first tab, we're going to hit equals design snow load, 15.4, hit enter. Design dead load equals, I'm going to go back down to my dead load. I'm clicking that 25. I'm going to hit enter. Then all we have to do here is just sum these up sum these two numbers, hit enter. We have 40.4 to add both of those up. So now we're gonna go over here to our rib deck because we need to find out, you know, what type of a span do we want? And you know, it's said back in here that we're gonna do a double span, assume a double span based on cost comparison for this project and for the roof deck. So we're gonna go ahead and just come back to our tab here, come back to our tab. It's gonna be a double span. We're going to assume a double span. Now here you're going to see seven feet for the span. And what that means is, is that, you know, this right here would be a span. So this right here is a beam and it's going to be holding a certain amount of weight for each span. So on the outside, there's going to be nothing out here. This would be like three and a half feet because half of seven is three and a half. So this beam right here is only holding, you know, pounds per square foot times three and a half feet. This beam right here is holding, you know, our pounds per square foot, you know, over a lot of surface area, a whole seven foot span. So we're going to assume double seven feet. Now we're looking at, you know, 40 in this case. Now right here, it says the number 40. We always want to choose one that's, you know, just above it. So we're going to say a double 20 um, span. So it says right the roof deck span, you would choose below. And we're going to say that we would choose a double 20 span. And one thing we want to do is when we look at the pounds per square foot of, um, of that um, roof deck that we're choosing, it says 1.95 right here, pounds per square foot. So we're going to write in 1.95 PSF. And that will help us in another video for what we're going to do to um, work on continuing going through, you know, and calculating, you know, uniform beam loading and tributary width area and all that type of stuff. So this has been a video for how to go about calculating your design snow load, finding the importance factor, finding the ground snow load, and also on how to add up your total dead load and then apply that to the total amount of snow and dead load on a design beam and then choosing a beam from a rib deck based upon that information.